Uh, again, my name is Noah Medina. I'm the director of the Stroud Media Center. We'll be giving a short briefing uh, since the Operation Cassidy and just what's the general understanding of what's happening today. Over 10,000 rockets missiles in the past eight years towards Israel, over 7,000 in the past three years since of disengagement, 3,200 3, during 2008. The Western Negev became the only region in the entire Western world where we have rockets and missiles that are being fired daily upon civilian population in the 21st century. One way to compete with the images coming out from Gaza, comparing the, the destruction and the devastation coming out from Gaza these days, as well one way to undermine the legitimacy of terrorism, is the most simple thing, exposing the human side of the story of Zerot in the Western Negev. The question of this evening, what role was the old Western Bank of play in the 2009 elections? Let me just say first about the Stereo Media Center, an invaluable tool for the international media. Uh, I know it helps me personally when I'm down there, just little bits of information where this is a phone number that people are coming from outside of Israel with no clue what's going on. And the information that uh, Noam provides to them uh, and putting himself in danger just living there every day, I'm not sure how you do that. Um, I often talk about... Uh, the difference between living in Sterol, living in, living in Yerushalayim, and we had during 2002, and buses blowing up all the time. And we were able to make a, a calculation in our minds, okay, I'm not going to go downtown today, I'm not going to take the bus today, I'm not going to do this because they might hit. We had that choice. In Sterol, there's no such thing because everything is open and everything is a target. And we have no concept of what it means uh, to live down there. Okay, we're going to start tonight by asking all of our panelists from all the different parties to address the specific question and issue tonight, being stay wrote, how will your party deal with the problem of stay wrote, the missiles coming into stay wrote, um, the problems of Gaza facing stay wrote? I think it's a very small secret that the, most of the soldiers and officers were a little bit disappointed in terms of the, of the finish of the operation, of the unfinished job, as many of them felt, and even openly, the Milleniks, not the Sadir uh, service soldiers, because they couldn't, but the Milleniks said openly that they were dissatisfied. Uh, which shows definitely the government was incompetent, at least in two things. A, closing down the smuggling of weapons by the Philadelphia corridor, and second, hurting the Hamas political power in the Gaza Strip to the extent of um, I'll start by congratulating the Sterot Media Center. It's very good to bring about, you know, great slogans, we'll finish them off, we'll cut their hair. It's not doable at the moment. That's one thing which I have to say, even if it doesn't sound too popular. Let's be honest with ourselves at least, and I'm leaving to each one of you the thought or, or the, the duty to think reasonably whether we can decapitate the Hamas. The people of Zdeirot are tense, the kids are going through trauma, we're raising a generation of young people who are facing enormous trauma which we haven't begun to handle. Zdeirot is a, is a complex issue, but we, this government has failed so drastically in the last two experiences that we've had. We had a chance now to stop the smuggling, to go in. We were there. We were right over there. Speak to the soldiers. Speak to the boys who were there. We could have finished off the war. We could have dealt Hamas a blow that they couldn't recover. I hope to God that they won't be able to recover today. Zerot has been hit time in and time in and time again. And thankfully, the army went in in Operation Cast Lead. They started in Kanaka and they continued for 20 days doing an excellent job of achieving the goals. They did not stop the rockets during the war, but they were showing Hamas that we were serious about destroying their infrastructure and their ability to stop the, and their ability to shoot these rockets. We have to go into Aza, we have to take over the Philadelphia Corridor, and we have to show Hamas that Israel is a legitimate country, that Israel is a legitimate state, and they cannot threaten our legitimacy by throwing projectiles over our borders. No negotiation with Hamas, no with Hezbollah. We have to beat them. That is what the Israeli government is doing now. And, and uh, I think for us, we have to go forward in two ways. There is no any alternative. All of us, we know this conflict can be get the last solution to build two states, Palestinian states and the Jewish states. 
even the issue in the case of demographics. Look what's really happening here. How many, how the uh, Arabs are coming up in years and years. No. How, how do we deal, deal with that human, Jewish, Israeli, and Zionist tragedy? And the answer is, the answer is that we absolutely cannot accept it in any way. It's true that eight years of bombs falling in this place, the, uh, the, the price that we have paid as a country, the price that those poor children have paid as a country, uh, as ch and, and to live in this country is a price that is too great to pay without question pshita. I think that that's something that probably I suspect everyone at this table and everyone in this room agree, agree upon. What serves best our interests, our interests, not the Arab interests, our interests, is indeed to separate between most of the Palestinians and the Jews, as far as it goes, as far as we can, as soon as we can, and make sure that we are retaining and strengthening our own country. I often joke, there are two types of people in this world. Those that have heard Seba Adom and those that haven't heard it yet. One of Sidorov's problems is Sidorov doesn't have representation in the Knesset that can stand up and remind the country what's happening. The creation of the Sidorov Media Center had to be done by citizens to let the government know what the government should be aware of. Our solution to the problem is creating a government that is accountable. Unfortunately, we have to deal with the reality that exists right now, and we're going to have to go and finish something off in Gaza, definitely the dangers that are there now. Whether it means taking over all of Gaza, I don't know, but we're going to have to stop the bombs from falling on Shemar. And maybe it's because I'm married to a physician, or we have a physician on our list, Arya El Dad, but I believe in preventative action. I believe in not having to hike up the propaganda to show our children suffering. I would prefer that we don't have suffering children to begin with. I would prefer not to laud the actions of a defense minister of, because we went to war and only lost these boys or the ones who lost their legs. I would prefer not having to go to war at all. I think that's the better idea. And I find it shocking that the exact same mindset that we are now suffering from still continues to exist. So maybe we'll solve Gaza. Um, it seems to me, from what I'm understanding from the journalists, that the people in Gaza are suffering pretty mightily. And hopefully they will realize that Hamas is not any good for them. And we may find some allies in places that we didn't expect to, and that would certainly be good for all of us.